I'm about to demonstrate for you how what we call marginal gain theory affects your revenue production capability and how, if deployed properly, it's capable of driving serious double-digit year-on-year growth in your revenue output. But before I do that, I'd just like to share with you some really interesting real-world examples of people who've been spectacularly successful in their chosen fields by using exactly this formula. In 2004, 17-year-old Novak Djokovic quietly entered the world tennis rankings at number 680. During that year, by winning 49% of his ATP tournament matches, he managed to scrape together a modest 300,000 in prize money. Roll forward to 2006, and Novak, now 19, has won 79% of his matches, earned $5 million in prize money, and sits at number three in the world men's rankings. A further five years hence, and he's winning nine out of every 10 matches, earns $14 million, and is ranked number one a dramatic and astronomic rise to the pinnacle of world tennis. Or was it? While his match-winning percentage, prize money and ATP ranking all went through the roof, he only won 6% more of the points he played in 2011 than he did in 2004, by basically improving the number of points he won by 1% per year over six years he was able to improve his match winning percentage by 183% and his prize money by a staggering 4,700%, all by winning one extra point every two sets that he played. That folks is marginal gain theory in all its glory. Now, many thousands of hours of analysis and practice went into exactly where and how to make those 1% improvements, but Novak Djokovic is a towering example of the power of marginal gains. In 2010, Rory McIlroy was already the 36th best professional golfer in the world. But as anyone who plays golf can tell you, it's literally a game of inches. I'll put it to you, it's actually a game of millimetres. The two most critical metrics in the game of golf are putts per round and shots per round. Do both of these well and you win. A lot. Between 2010 and 2019, Rory McIlroy improved those two metrics by 1.2% and 1.1% respectively. A little more than 0.1 of a percent every year. But those tiny improvements made consistently over and over catapulted him to superstardom and the world's number one ranking. Just 0.1% per year. Nearly everyone already knows the story of David Brailsford. In the 108 years before the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, Great Britain had won 20 medals, half of them bronze. Not exactly a global powerhouse in world cycling. Since Brailsford took over as head coach, the team won 38 Olympic medals, 24 of them gold, and set more than 10 new world records. His secret formula for that stunning success? Marginal gains. Michael Lewis's best-selling book, Moneyball, later made into the movie of the same name starring Brad Pitt, documented the transformation of the serially underperforming Major League Baseball franchise, the Oakland Athletics, applying a combination of an analytics model called Sabermetrics and marginal gain theory. The A's still hold the Major League record for most consecutive wins in a season, and the model originally employed by Billy Bean, the Oakland general manager, transformed the sport and industry of baseball. Every year, casinos around the world generate billions of dollars from blackjack. It's common knowledge that every game in every casino is stacked against the players and in favour of the house. Just how stacked is called the house edge. For as long as there have been casinos, blackjack has been their meat and potatoes. Day in and day out, hoovering up cash like giant black holes in space. Between 57% and 65% of casino revenues come from blackjack, and yet, 
Blackjack has the smallest house edge of all the games played, averaging out at roughly 1%. What that means practically is that out of every 100 Blackjack hands, the player will win between 48 and 49, and the casino between 51 and 52. That's how narrow the gap between poverty and phenomenal wealth is, 1%. That's why, incidentally, casinos simply can't abide card counters. They call them cheats, which is pretty ironic given they are the ones who openly stack the gaming odds in their favour. And as soon as they even suspect a card counter, that person is out the door forever. All for a 1% advantage. Which brings us to RPMG and our marginal gain theory for revenue. The house edge of the global sales game at the moment is 98%. For every sales opportunity that arises, sellers lose, or fail to sell, 98% of the time. That's because only a third of leads turn into opportunities, a third of those opportunities turn into offers, and 20% of the offers turn into sales. A third times a third times a fifth is just over 2%. But like Novak Djokovic, Rory McIlroy, David Brailsford, and Micah Ponte, Marginal gain theory can transform that suboptimal performance, providing, of course, it's correctly applied. Add 1% to the conversion metrics at each core stage of that pipeline, 33% to 34% and 20% to 21%, and the overall revenue output goes up by 13%. Unfortunately, this formula works just as well in reverse. Small degradations at each stage accumulate to much larger overall decreases in output. What we see a lot is that inside organisations, there are a number of positive things improving performance and an equal number of negative things zeroing out the positives and leaving the business right where it started, in spite of a lot of investment and effort. And we see that a lot. Hence the importance of understanding all the drivers of revenue and how they relate to each other. There's no point in spending a truckload of money to improve three to four things if terrible performance elsewhere is going to negate those improvements you're actually better off doing nothing at all. At least you won't waste your money. This RPMG heat map illustrates the 36 core revenue drivers, and we use it to help our clients understand what to stop doing, what to keep doing, and where to focus their improvement efforts. Novak Djokovic didn't go out and hit every shot harder. He hit the right shots harder, but most of his effort and practice went into knowing when to hit the right shots harder and how to manage his points to get into position to hit the right shots and hit them harder. In our revenue context, the heat map is the equivalent of that analysis. How has this worked in the real world? Well, since 2005, 156 organisations, including those whose logos appear here, have employed RPMG's marginal gain theory and telemetry revenue analytics system. Their average year-on-year -year revenue growth in the three years immediately after deployment was 24%. Sounds big. Sounds too big. Well, not until you realise that that's really only 2% at each pipeline stage rather than 1%. That's the power of marginal gain. To learn more about marginal gain theory, telemetry and how it might work for you, join us at www.rpmgi.com or email us at info at rpmgi.com.